have the deformed skulls. They would do this cone head thing and elongate their cone their heads. This is what these all mech guys look like. Like this. They have these elongated skulls, weird eyes, a bunch of oddball characters. This one too. This is in the Yucatan, this skull. Child. This guy's actually had his whole face flattened and widened. Now we don't know why they did this. It had to do had to do with uh, the aristocracy. We do know that uh, as children, young babies, before their their the plates in their heads fuse when they're about two years old, if you can start to shape the skull, and apparently this is what they did. We don't know if they were imitating uh, other people they saw. I mean, that's one theory. Uh, well, they were imitating actual terrestrials or something like that. They wanted to double the capacity of their brain. They wanted to, to look taller. It was some kind of elitist thing, too, where, where it was the, the aristocracy who looked like this. Oh, the Olmecs weren't even known until, really, the early 1940s. And that they started finding these giant basalt heads. They weigh about 20 tons. They would find them in the, the oil exploration areas of, of the Atlantic coast huge, huge basalt heads just in swamps and things like that. Bulldozers would uncover them. And one of the things about the colossal heads, as these guys are called, is that they look really African. They're, they're wearing helmets or turbans. They have the wide nose and the thick lips. They look like some Nigerian rugby players or something like that. They find these too in the Pacific Coast too. They, they find them in wow. Guatemala. Olmec artifacts have been found all the way down to Costa Rica and Panama and well up the Pacific Coast as well. Some of the Olmec heads were, uh, they were, they were completely buried in these areas and then people were like walking across this one. There was a little trail and finally people noticed a nose and stuff like that and then archaeologists began to dig it out. Here's that head now at the, uh, one of the museums at Jalapa. But you see how, uh, in this case, very, very uh, African-looking guys. This guy, too. This is how they find them, these giant, giant weird heads. This is made out of basalt as well, which is extremely hard to carve. Gee. Also, at some of these Olmec cities, the La Leventa, very, very good. Uh, sewage and water systems. Uh, These cities were like pre-planned cities, uh, extremely well made. And the whole Olmec area really is what they call the Isthmus of Tehuantepec. This area right down in here, although the Olmecs were up the Pacific coast, they were down into Guatemala and El Salvador and farther south. But this is the area of the Olmecs. It's called the Isthmus of Tehuantepec in in the very southern part of Mexico. And it's the narrowest part of Mexico between the Pacific and the Atlantic Oceans. And in fact, when they were first trying to build uh, something like the Panama Canal, there were three uh, places that they wanted to do it. One was here at the Isthmus of Tehuantepec, and the other one was in Nicaragua, and the third was in Panama, Panama. where they did build a canal. What the Mexican government did instead of building a canal across here was they built a railroad to connect these areas. But it's interesting here that the Olmecs, this was their area. They, those colossal heads are in this Atlantic area, but they thought that the Olmecs originally started here around in uh, uh, the Pacific area where Guatemala and, um, come together. This guy's an Olmec too. Here, he looks very Egyptian. He appears to have a false beard. beard. He's mm -hmm. wearing a headdress that's kind of Egyptian. This guy's an old man. In fact, everything ball. that they used to uh, ascribe to the Mayans, they now ascribe to the Olmecs. That's the number system, the hieroglyphs, the ball game. He's holding a rubber ball. Here. Uh -huh. Soccer, uh, football, it originated with the Olmecs. How about that? By the way, the Olmecs typically are said to go back to about 1,300 B.C., no, so over 3,000 years ago at least that. for the Olmecs. No. Here's a chart at uh, Comacalco, one of the Olmec capitals. These are all, all these guys are Olmecs. And the Toltecs are even older than them. Elongated heads. 
This guy down here looks very Chinese. Weird, weird guys. They were obsessed with jade as well. And to the Olmecs and Mayans, as well as the Chinese, jade was the most valuable of all the commodities. In fact, this, these guys, these figurines of Olmecs, they're, they're made of jade. And you can see again what these guys look like, the long hair, kind of oriental sort of eyes in a way. Mainstream archaeologists are saying, well, these guys are just American Indians. You know, they're, they don't have no. any connection with Africa or, or Pacific or any place like that. Egyptian looking. Well, the Egyptians also did this cranial binding too and creating the elongated craniums. This is Meritaten, who was one of the daughters of Akhenaten and Nefertiti. And she too. Is, is basically a cone head with cranial deformation. Tutankhamun. He's also a cone head. He has a deformed cranium as well. This is a statue from his uh, uh, from his tomb, and this is this is what he looked like. You can get a better. This is also Tutankhamun. You get a better idea of what his head was. Also in Tutankhamun's tomb, by the way, was a trunk of boomerangs. I. Not just one boomerang. No, he was a boomerang nut. <laughs> and a whole trunk of boomerangs. And you, yeah, you, you think of boomerangs as, you know, that, well, that's some Australian Aboriginal thing. Well, the Egyptians hunted with boomerangs. Boomerangs have been found all over the world. And, and boomerangs are, have been used in the American Southwest and Mexico as well. If you go to the Mexico City Museum, you'll see boomerangs. This whole thing of cranial deformation was worldwide. Kurds in northern Iraq, we're still doing this, right up 1960s. Uh, Pacific Islands, like Vanuatu, they were also doing this, right up until modern times. This is in the Belgian Congo. This is a photograph taken in the 1920s. This kid, his head is bound. He's going to be a cone head when he grows up. Yeah. And a weird, a weird looking one, too. It, you wonder what happened to him. So you go, you go south now. Of yeah, Costa Rica. South of in into Central America to Costa Rica. And one of the weird things there are these round granite balls. Right. And some of them are huge. Super they're hard. Big. They're big. They they're perfectly spherical granite. Uh, stone masons tell me today this is one of the hardest things to make is a perfect round ball just to take your hammer and chisel. Uh, to make a perfectly round one is almost impossible, and these things are perfectly round. They, uh, they don't know why, where they came from. They just they find them in the jungles and stuff on the uh, on the west coast. This is where they find these, and there's an island right over here too. They also find them. It's like some big wave or something hit Costa Rica and washed these big stone balls. Up into this part no, of Costa Rica, those are Panama's right here, so they're, they're right along the border with, with Panama. You don't know about they, that, but that's, the, that's the what those, this, these are energy 